What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko back with Tony totally filming this on a different day than we did the labyrinth profile Hello, and in today's video we're doing goatee or fish. Yes uh, For those who are wondering why it's he just said fish uh, goatee is an alternative pronunciation for fish If you see the GH like you say it in enough if you say the O as you say it in woman Women 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 and the TI as in initiate, initiate. There you go, initiate you get the word fish the English language sucks yeah, so goatee slash fish. And Tony's been on this deck for a while since it came out, but it got its second wave of support, and I think this deck's a little bit cooler now. Yeah, so uh, I, did, I did do this deck profile on my own channel, but this one I think I'm just going to focus more on the idea behind the deck yep. and the plays you uh, plays against the current meta than I am that one where I just go really deep on what everything does. So if you guys want to check out the more in-depth profile, make sure to check out Tony's channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. And with that, Tony, you can go right ahead. Uh, starting off, we have the... These are guys that from the original Pote set. We have two paces, two uh, shift. Both these monsters come back on the next standby phase, or... The standby phase of the next turn after they were banished. And when they do, when they're special on their opponent's turn, they can, they're basically uh, uh, formula synchros. They can synchro summon on their opponent's turn for fish synchros. Uh, yep. This is how you're doing most of your plays. You're, synch you're banishing these on your turn. They'll come back on your opponent's turn. You synchro summon into disruptions and you screw your opponent. So you're maxing out on these because these are your, your starters. These are your playmakers. That has not changed, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, realistically, as much as I wanted a third version of this, uh, these still will be the way that you're performing most of your plays on your opponent's turn. And that's the thing you're gonna have to understand. This deck doesn't do a lot of crazy crazy things on your turn. It does a lot of crazy things on your opponent's turn, which arguably is a little better this format because you'd rather stop your opponent in the tracks than try to build a board and then get blown up by Dark Ruler. Yep. Uh, with that being said, they come back, they only can single summon the main phase, which is a little awkward because if your opponent enters the battle phase and with normal summon the monster enters the battle phase, they kind of bait out this, but we have ways to deal with that. But at the end of the day, they also have some unique beneficial effects. This one can banish itself to summon any fish from your hand. Uh, gets out a lot of things that are high level, which is really nice. Uh, some builds can play deep sea coelacanth as well. Interesting. For funky things. Uh, this one banishes itself from the graveyard to increase a monster attack by 500, which makes, which is really great for monsters like your deep beyond, which gain attack based off of banished. Okay. Because it essentially gives it an additional 1,000 attack. But it's also useful, useful because once you synchro with them, this one goes to the grave. This one doesn't do anything in the grave. This one just puts itself back in the banish and you can do it again and again and again and again. Okay. And that's realistically why you're playing three of each because they still are your ways to continuously have disruptions. Yep. Uh, from there, though, we then have uh, our newest one, uh, two Zep. Zep works a little differently from these two. When it's banished, it immediately special summons itself to the fields. Unlike this one, which, is, which are delayed. Furthermore, when it's summoned, it immediately synchro summons. Okay. This has some interesting benefits. First off, because of the fact that these ones come back in the next standby phase and only work in the main phase, they're a little slower. You need to set them up the turn before. This one triggers immediately. If you need to do something on the spot, this is the one that you're going to access. Yep. Uh, with that being said, this one also has no way of banishing itself from, the, uh, from anywhere, which means you're going to have to play other cards, and which is why we're only playing two. It's a card that you can use to do some really wonky things, but it's also a card that's extremely dead in your hand. Uh, then we have the non-tuners starting off. We have three Enoch. Enoch, uh, great card. Uh, first off, level six, which means probably the only way you're going to be summoning this card is either tribute summoning it or summoning it off of your paces, which is not the hardest thing to do. Uh, on the field, when it's summoned, you target any banished fish level four or lower in your banish, summon it to the field with its effects negated. Uh, this means that at any point, if you go paces... Uh, banish yourself to summon Enoch. Enoch can summon it back, and there's your free level 8 synchro. But more than likely, what you're going to do is its other effect. You can banish a fish from your field or hand, search for a goatee trap. And your goatee traps are powerful traps. Uh, which means most than likely what you're going to do when you summon back that paces is be banish the paces to grab one of the traps, and then paces will just come back on the next turn to do the synchro play. There's actually a few lines that you could do with this to get double disruptions at a field wide banish, and that's pretty much the reason you're playing it. But the axe in the traps is the most important part, okay. even if this card is kind of bricky for being a level six. But from there, we then have three Snowpios. Snowpios is by far, I think, the best addition to this deck. Uh, well, the best main deck addition, at least. We'll get to the X deck, and then you'll see what we can do with this deck. Snowpios can banish two fish from your hand or graveyard, summon itself to the field. Uh, which means this is a way to banish things like paces in your graveyard after you use them. But it's also a way to banish Zep, so that once you banish that Zep, it immediately triggers some self field and synchro summons with the snow beams. Uh, on the same time, though, when it's summoned, uh, it targets a monster on the field. If it ever leaves the field, it gets banished. You can target your opponent's monsters, and that turns any monster that causes any monster when it leaves the field to get banished. Fantastic. But you also can target itself. And the reason why you want to target itself is because if it was banished, you can banish a fish from your graveyard to add it back to the hand. 
And that gives you ways to also, once again, banish things like your uh, paces from the graveyard to reset them from the after you synchro summon with them. But it also means that this comes back and you can do it over and over again. In the case of something like Zep, it means that you can sync, you could banish the Zep from your graveyard, summon this, target itself, the Zep will summon itself, you synchro with it, and then you get it back and you could do this again next turn as well. Oh, that's crazy. And that is, I guess, the real benefit of this card. It's a continuous non-tuner to match with your all your continuously returning tuners. Uh... Unfortunately, though, it being a level 6, once again, can be bricky if you don't open a lot of fish. Yep. Uh, then, we are playing two Ixseep. Ixseep, uh, when a mo fish would be banished, which is, well... All of the time. All of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so much summon itself in hand. Free, it's level 4 extended. The other fact is, if it itself would be banished, you reset on the next standby phase any goatee trap that's been in the graveyard or in the banished. Really useful just for resetting some of your one-off traps, but most of the time, it's just for the extender aspect that you're playing. Okay. Uh, why? Because we do need level 4 extenders for one of our synchros. Uh, from there, we're playing 3 uh, Be Bay of Tuneful Princess on summon it, banish yourself to summon any level 4 lower fish. This, of course, triggers things like Exceep, which is fantastic. It contributes to the banish count, so things like your goatee uh, beyond get really big at times by adding this to the count. It once again, however, mostly will just let you access your tuners. Yep. That's pretty much what it is. This goes into paces and then paces throughout the combo, and because it banishes itself as cost on summon, it's kind of hard to stop. Yep. Uh, with that being said, I personally find this like in a format where their hand traps exist because we are in a format where they don't. Yeah. Uh, getting Ash on this ruins your day. However, I don't even know if people are really on Ash. And right that's now. precisely why this deck has like a potential. If you get Ashed on Bay of Tutor for Princess, that really screws up your lines because not only do you not have a way to put more bodies on the field, you also lose any potential Vaxes for your deck. Yep. Then we have two Silent Angler. Uh, Silent Angler is a monster that just is like Exceed just special summons up to the field. It contributes with any of your level 2 tuners to make a level 6. It's great synchro fodder. Uh, there are scenarios where you can also get Ixseep and uh, Angler, and you can overlay them for like a rank 4, but I don't play any in this deck. Okay. Uh, one option that people have suggested before to play is Lifeless Leaf Fish, just because it can send Shift from the Grave to set it up, and then from there also recycle pieces. But I never felt like I needed just to set up Shift. I wanted to get to a certain point, and that was make a level 6 synchro. And a lot of times, this only let me do so on my opponent's turn, and that wasn't nearly as impressive. Uh, there was an argument, again, you could take out the anglers for this, but I'd rather get the, uh, a the better special? set that way, yeah, yeah, than having the ability to recycle. From the going to the spells, we have three, the most distant, deepest depths. Uh, field spell, uh, while on the field, if you control a synchro monster, a uh, fish synchro monster, cannot be destroyed by card effects, cannot be banished by card effects. This makes it kind of sticky against your opponent. But the funny part is, it also means that if you were to field wide banish or something like your Deep Beyond, it sticks on the field. Why would you want it on the field though? Because while on the field, you can banish a fish from your hand or graveyard. Search for a goatee monster. Oh. This is another way to re trigger things like your paces. Fantastic for that reason. But it's searching, continuous searching that also triggers your deck. Even, however, let's say this card would be removed from the field, because sometimes it happens. If it's in the graveyard, at any point, if you were to summon a fish monster, you could target a fish on the field, banish it, add this card back to your hand. So it has recursion on top of it. It has recursion on top of that. And it triggers a lot of your cards, and that itself has some benefit. But it also means that we can send it to the graveyard with something like Foolish Barrel of Goods to pseudo-search it that way as well. Okay. So really cool benefits there. It's still a field spell. And because we now have so many additional targets, this card actually has use. Yep. Compared to before. Uh, from there, of course, we have the one terraforming and the one foolish barrel of goods for getting into this field spell. Because getting into the field spell gets you into a lot of uh, gets you into a lot of your plays easier. Yep. Most specifically, your Eonoc, which grabs you into a traps. So it functionally gets you into the rest of your deck. Uh, from there, we're playing two Radi Fusion and one Instant Fusion. Uh, this will summon out either a level four non tuner or a level two tuner to make any of your plays. Simple as that. Just more bodies. Good synergy. Yeah. Uh, then we have two Pararay's map. Uh, one funny thing about all their uh, non-tuners, they're all zero attack. Also, so is Bay of Tuneful Princess. This searches for everyone who starts. Interesting. Uh, at the same time, uh, there is that aspect of you have to search something, you have to summon immediately. But all you, if you summon Bay of Tuneful, which is the most of your target, you're immediately normal summoning that, and that gets you in any, any other fish. Yeah. So this says grab any of your non uh, any of your tuners. Or with Bay of Tuneful, one thing I did for, uh, forget to mention, Bay of Tuneful also can summon a level 4 in case you need a, uh, a non-tuner as well. Oh, okay, that's fair. So this grabs you pretty much into any of your plays. Uh, the one terraforming, you're playing levels 2, 4, 6. The opponent's going to have to guess which one. And one foolish to grab you into uh, send shift, most likely. And then one, uh, one for one to summon out Bay of Tuneful to grab you into anything else. Uh, with that being said, now you may notice one thing I'm, uh, one thing that's relevant here is that I'm playing graveyard cards. And that also means, if you haven't noticed, I'm not playing D-Shifter. 
So why am I not playing D-Shifter? And this is something I think is rather controversial. You cannot actually play D-Shifter in this deck. Okay, I, I, was, I asked you this before the video. I told you not to tell me because I want to know now. So if you, cards like Snopios, cards like even your Iana, uh, your Field Spell, they require a amount of fish in your graveyard at times to do things. Yes, you can theoretically banish from the field, uh, from your hand as well. But in most cases, that's just extremely negative. Yeah. Uh, so you do need a graveyard. More off, even its recycle effect requires a graveyard. So having the graveyard, you need to have valid fish to banish in the graveyard. And you need to do it in the first few turns. That's when your impact for these cards are the most crucial. If your fish gets banished, you don't get the recursion. You don't get the recursion, You your deck actually halts. In half. This is a deck that kind of wants a snowball, right? So you want a snowball. Yeah, so if you're not starting, then you're not getting anywhere. Correct. And that's kind of the reason why I tested it when I was testing with D-Shifter. I activated And while it does slow down some of my opponent's plays, it actually put me in a worse position in most of my combos where I didn't have a follow-up to then end the game as well. And that's the more the important part. Not only do you snowball, that snowball then allows you to kill your opponent on the following turn. Not doing so means that you've also invalidated the D-Shifter's impact to the game. You let your opponent get an additional turn where they don't get banished cards now, and you have to then once again snowball from there with your resources not there either. Yeah, that's right. So you unfortunately do need to uh, have a graveyard, and that unfortunately also means you cannot play D-Shifter. Yep. Uh, with that being said, I really don't want to flood game my opponent this format, especially how unfun this format is already. That's fair. Uh, then the traps. This is where things are great. Uh, three goatee, uh, two goatee fury. Uh, you're playing two because you want to draw into it sometimes so you can search other traps. But this card is fantastic. Continuous trap, first off, lets you target one of your fish monsters you control, one monster, one card your opponent controls, banish them until the next standby phase. Or one monster your opponent controls, banish them until the next standby phase. Yeah. Uh, this card is fantastic for one reason. Uh, it, because all your fish trigger when they're banished, this really does nothing for you. But it banished, it's a Farfa on your opponent's turn. And Farfa has applications even now. Yeah. Uh, funny thing, however, it banished until your next standby phase. Which means if you get, you can use it on your turn to get rid of a card. You can use it on your opponent's turn to get rid of a card. But because your fish return on the next standby phase, you could use that same fish to banish two cards, basically. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. And, more than anything, if you combine it with a card like Snowpiece, which targets a card on the field and makes it banish itself permanent when it leaves the field, you turn this temporary banish of your opponent's monsters into permanent banishes. This card really puts in a lot of work just for that reason, even if you can't access your synchros. It really kind of like makes it so that you kind of get into your, uh, you can snow, slow out your opponent. Yeah. Also, if a fish monster will be special summoned while you have a fish banished, you can banish this card to increase the attack of all your fish by 100 for each card banished or I think each fish banished. Uh, realistically, I, I've, for each currently banished card, yeah. So include your opponent's cards as well. Can That's be crazy. It dude. can make your monsters very big. Yeah. I have turned a, a, a paces with zero attack into an 1800 beater to end games. It's That's not a lot of attack, but still like 18 cards banished. You can achieve that. Yeah. Uh, and that pretty that that's really useful on its own. It's the only form of real disruption you have in the deck in terms of traps. But this is the one that I think really has like capitalized a lot of my games. Yep. Uh, then we have one Go Teach uh, Cosmos. Go Teach Cosmos is one of those cards that has accumulated effects based on how far you went. At one man minimum, one banished fish. None of your fish monsters can be destroyed this turn. Uh, that one actually is the most important one. We'll get into that. At four more banished fish, none of your fish monsters' effects on the field can be negated, okay. activation or effect. Uh, turns all your fishes in spell speed four, kind of. Uh, and at eight fish, you just summon a goatee synchro from your deck as a synchro summon. That's that one. If you get off, you probably win the game. Either yeah, way. but I was say. it's actually the first two effects that are relevant. The, obviously, the four plus effect means that your all your effects go off unhindered, and your opponent really has no way to stop that. It's the plus one effect that's the most important, actually. Remember how I told you before that your opponent can just normal summon a monster attacking your uh, goatees to force you to use them early? Yeah, can't do that. They can't be destroyed by battle. Oh yeah, so oh. this alleviates all that pressure that the first like the goatees had it before. Well, now your opponent realistically has to play into your cards. Yeah, and that's what makes this card fantastic. Uh, just the idea that at such a simple condition of plus one, you have the ability to no longer be afraid of all the weaknesses of the deck. Uh, granted, also uh, with Ixie, you could reset this card, so I have reset this multiple times. But you actually see that within the span of two turns, it's very easy to get to the plus eight, which. At that point, you're winning the game. I know you can reset your traps. Is there ever a situation where you can foolish goods one of your traps just to uh, set it? You can no. Unfortunately, none of these. Well, yes, uh, I have done that. But there's actually another foolish barrel target, uh, foolish barrel goods target that I'll get into in a bit. Okay. Uh, the other last trap point is the one goatee chain. A uh, goatee chain, when activated, targets one of your fish, banishes it, and then summons another goatee with a different name from the deck. Oh, okay. Uh, this lets you access a different goatee, which sometimes in a break your hand 
kind of saves you. But it also lets you do some wonky things with some of your synchro plays that will explore when I uh, do some combos. And lastly, the other card was sending with Google Trail Goods, the Ice Barrier. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, okay. Ice Barrier searches into Enoch and or searches into Snopios, which is really good. Uh, at certain situations, because it sends any level 5 or higher fish, but adds back any uh, fish or any, sorry, any level 5 or higher water, but adds back any water. You can also add back paces for some recovery as well. Uh, overall, a good card, but in most cases, you'll still probably be sending... Uh, the, the field spell. Uh, field spell. Yeah. Also, uh, this goes back to also the idea of Cosmos. You can use this card to, um, when your phone attacks one of your tuners, to drop its attack so that it lives the battle. Yep. And that kind of is useful as well. But uh, I wouldn't play more than one. It's kind of bricky. That's fair. All right. Going to the next deck. We have that card that really sells it all. We have two uh, Ariampos. Uh, fun fact. Actually, this is where I'm going to get into this. If you're wondering where all these names come from, they're all anagrams for fish in different languages. Uh, oh. What? That's kind of cool. Yeah, all of them are like weird. Like I think this one's Portuguese. In like, if you re if it's an anagram for fish in Portuguese. Okay. Anyway, this card is crazy. On summon, banishes any fish from the deck or any level six or lower fish from the deck. Uh, that's all your deck basically. Yeah. Uh, trigger any fish effect from the deck for the next turn. Great. When it gets used, it gets used as synchro material. You ban it. You target a fish in the grave, banish it, and then search for a fish with equal or lower level. This alone sets up two disruptions if you make this. And it's level six? It's level six. Okay. And that's pretty much why you play this card. Not only does it get you any goatee effects from your deck, and then grabs you any goatee later when you synchro summon with it. And that's why I put such heavy emphasis on making that level six, because this opens up all your plays on your opponent's turn. And okay. I'll show you some of them when we get to that. Uh, then, for the other goatee synchros, we have the one Ghoul Glim. Ghoul Glim, when battling, banishes a monster on the field, or banishes the monster it battles. Two, on your opponent's standby phase, it splits, it banishes itself to split back into the materials that make it. Okay, that's cool. Uh, in most situations, you're making this as offense on your turn, so you can do something on your turn that then becomes disruption on your opponent's turn by going back into the materials. Yep. Because when the materials get summoned, they can synchro summon again. Uh, we then have the two uh, Askan, the Bicorn Goatee. Uh, on summon, targets uh, fish on the field. One card your opponent controls, banishes them. Uh, fantastic card, because you can also target itself. When it gets banished, it banishes a fish from your graveyard, summons itself back to the field. This is why you need a graver, but it means that essentially you banish, it just says banish a card of your opponent controls. And that itself is really great. Um, and that's pretty much your premier form of removal. But if it really gets hardcore enough, uh, one of the options you make is that goatee of the DP on. On summon, banishes the entire field. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. This is, just, this is just the reset button. It then comes back and gains attack equal to number of banished cards, uh, banished fish you have, I believe. Which, actually banished cards. It gains 500 for every number of banished monsters. Uh, so he can get big. He can get very big, especially because if you banish a shift, it gains a thousand attack and then five hundred. One for yeah. the shift and the sh then for the actual banished monster. Uh, this is how you can actually kill your opponent with this card. Yep. Uh, then uh, more likely, what you're gonna be making is two of the white or whale. White or whale on summon nukes all attack resistant monsters. Oh, okay. so just say bye bye to links, I guess. Uh, and then it inflicts piercing damage and can attack monsters twice. This is a field clear on its own. But one of the cool things I love about this card, it's not once per turn. I can make multiple of these on my opponent's turn and continuously nuke the field. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, and this is like, this is, I think, the card I make more than Askan sometimes just because it has such a more wide array of damage. Yeah. Uh, then we have the one Barone and the one Changing as your level 10s instead of making uh, the uh, Deep Beyond uh, Barone from the Negate. But Changing, funny enough, synergizes your deck because as you banish, you trigger Changing's effect and then really rip your opponent apart. And then he also gets really big. He gets also equally big. Your deck, your turn, your first turn ends with making a setup. Your opponent's turn ends up disrupting the field. And then your turn, you make Changing and a bunch of beaters and then just clear the field and end the game. Yeah. It's very easy to put up damage with this deck, shockingly. Uh, we then have the one uh, area as well as the one uh, Bisque Keeper. This one summons fish from hand. I don't know how often I've used that effect, but the banish effect comes up sometimes. This one just... It's a lot. Low. Yeah. And then, of course, the two rare fish is a little four uh, fusion target and the one, um, what's the name, uh, Alvain as your level two target. Yeah. Fun fact, and the reason I'm playing the Alvain, this is generic. Oh, it doesn't well, require... All the to... other ones require fish tuners. This one is generic. Oh, so which means at any six. point you open a level two and instant fusion, at least you can make this, and that's all you need to start your place. All right. All right. Now, let's go into some combos. Uh, some really simple ones. Uh, let's go with the one... Uh, I talked about a few combos, but the most... One of the ones we talked about is opening Paces and Enoch. Okay. Paces and Enoch gives you two disruptions. One of them is a targeted banish. The other one is a field-wide banish. Okay. Uh, you normal summon the Paces. You banish it. You summon the Enoch. Enoch will then summon back the Paces. You use Enoch's effect then to banish Paces from your field to add Goatee Chain from your deck to your hand. Uh, then, you will set the Goatee Chain. I'm going to shift like that. From there. On your opponent's turn, on your their standby phase, this paces will come back. And since it was special summon this turn, you can now synchro summon with it on your main phase. 
At any point, your opponent makes something that you think is the right, you synchro someone with these two monsters, and then you immediately go into your Askan. Askan will target whatever you think is a threat and itself to banish both cards. And in response to this effect, you will chain your goatee chain to target your Askan. The cool part about this effect is that you don't actually have to banish both cards to get the banish to go off. You just need to target both. Oh. So when you activate goatee chain, you'll banish the Askan. The other card will still get banished nonetheless, but then you'll be able to special summon from your deck a shift. Wherever that shift is. A shift. Then, in response to all this, since Askan was banished, it will then proceed to banish the paces, resetting it once more to come back to the field. And since Shift was now special summon this turn, it too can now synchro summon on your opponent's turn, of which you can then go with the Askan into your Goatee of the Deep Beyond, and then banish the entire field. Then on your opponent's turn, these two come back, and then you're free to do whatever the heck you want from there. Yeah. That's, that's that is nice. two disruptions at minimum with two cards. Yeah. Really cool. Uh, the more important combo, however, is what happens when you can access uh, Ariampos in any way. There's a few ways to do it, but all you need to do is be able to make Ariampos with one of your level 2 tuners. So you just need it and any level 4 extender. In this case, let's say we're going to use mm, Instant Fusion, for example, right? Yeah, it could be Ready Fusion. It could be anything as long as you can make it with one of your level 2 fish tuners. That's crazy, okay. So I know some of the, uh, the paces. I'm going to activate that Instant Fusion. That lets me summon out the level 4 monster. From there, I can then synchro summon with these two. And that lets me make Ariampos, where of which Ariampos on summon will then allow me to banish a fish from my deck, and I'm gonna use it to banish Snowpeels. Snowpeels, as you know, when banished, lets me banish a fish from my graveyard, i.e. the tuner, to add itself back to my hand. So now I have a Snowpeels in hand at minimum. That's all I need for now. And that's all I need for the setup. On my opponent's turn, once again, this comes back to the field and it can now synchro summon on my opponent's main phase. Of which at any point, I can use these two to synchro summon with these two monsters to summon something like, I don't know, uh, let's say in this case, it's a white or a whale, but let's say we can also go for Askan. Both work really well, but let's say white or a whale. In doing this, a few things will trigger. First off, white or will nuke the field, great disruption, but then the Arian post in my graveyard triggers as well. It lets me target a fish on my graveyard, banish it, can be this one, to then add a fish of equal or lower level. Since I banish a level four, I can add anything a level four or lower, of which I will now add a zap. Okay. Now, at any point, I still have the Snowpeels. Snowpeels is a quick effect, which means at any point during this turn, I can go activate Snowpeels' effect, banish the paces to reset it, banish the Zep in my hand to special summon it to the field. Chain links will trigger, chain link one, chain link two, you target a card on the field, most likely Snowpeels, to get banished when it leaves the field. But then the Zep comes back and then immediately synchro summons itself with the Snowpeels, which will get banished, summon out another form of disruption. Uh, let's say in this case, we're gonna summon out the Askan. Yep. We'll then go chain link one uh, snow peels to banish a fish in the grave, and then chain link two Askan, of which will then banish itself to banish a card. The snow peels return to the hand, and then we can go ahead and then proceed to banish any number of cards to bring back that, and then you disrupt your opponent twice. So you, so you have one disruption, two disruption. And then you, in theory, if you- yeah, in theory, if at any point you were you made, let's say a white or one instead, you keep the Zep in the graveyard, and now, at any point, if you get another fish in the grave, you can do this again on the next turn. Yeah. So this is two disruptions, most likely two field nukes. That then, however, is great because then it follows up back into a level two to allow you to make a level 10. So this is where you go into your Changying or you go into this one. You can make a Barone DT, from here. Barone. And then at this point, you set up a negate. You can still get two attacks in and the snow peels at any point can trigger. That's crazy. And this is just all two card combos. Yes. Uh, you can also, however, this is where it's funny. I can also now just banish these two immediately. To summon back the Zep, because the Zep, even though the effect is synchro summon works on my opponent's turn, the spe special summon effect works anytime. And that means I can even on that following turn make another level eight, like I don't know, another Askan, and then I just have damage. Yeah, and then this can pop a card, uh, this can attack twice. So you can pretty much just go for game. This is game, because yeah. if I summon this, I use the effect to banish itself. I can I can go banish itself, then banish, banish the, the Snowpeos. This will banish the paces. This will come back. This will go back to my hand. And even funny enough now, not only have I proceeded no TK my opponent, I still set myself up for the Snowpeos on the next turn. That's crazy. That's actually a pretty cool two-card combo. Yeah. And a lot of these come just because you can access the Ariampos. And because it all banishes, this is where it does have that advantage against something like Tyrellman. Tyrellman work for well when they go to the graveyard. This deck just banishing cards. banishes cards. And it doesn't matter if you really screw with a graveyard. It needs a graveyard, but all that graveyard banish is cost. So they have to preemptively get rid of the, your graveyard just so that you don't float, not knowing how that might work out for them. But because it banishes, it ruins their plays. You still get your setup, and a lot of your setup 
is very hard to like deal with. Also, one thing I want to know just before we end the deck profile here is that you're not playing lights or darks, which means a lot of people who are on the Bisted engine, which I guess most, if not all people are on, uh, it doesn't do anything against Yeah. Them. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this is part of the reason why, arguably enough, you actually saw in YCS Pasadena, one of these uh, one of these goatee decks may get to top tables. It did on 4 obviously, doesn't compete, but it actually has at least an edge in the way that it banishes cards against tier elements. Right yeah, now. that's really cool. So thank you, Tony, for the deck profile. This deck is actually kind of cool. It does a lot more than I expected it to. Uh, if you guys want to see, I guess, a more in-depth profile, you have it on your channel, right? Yeah, I think I go a lot more deeper with a, a lot of these. Uh, I, this combos are going to be the same, so you can skip that part. But realistically, I go in a lot more deep about how all the cards work and what you can do with all of them. All right, so make sure to check it out on Tony's channel. I'll link will be in the description. Thank you guys all for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, Spanko and Tony, signing out. Peace.